Hey everyone, uh, it's Don here with Paleo Tracks. Uh, I'm out in the Rockies once again, and today I'm gonna show you guys how I go about making my rabbit sticks or my primitive throw sticks. So stick around, much to see. I know you'll enjoy. So first things first, um, you can kind of see the train I'm operating in. The terrain you're in will ultimately dictate the style of stick you make. Whether it's a quick stick where you just pick up a branch off the ground, whew, give it a throw, or you're in a you know more open area, it's a way flatter, a little bit more desert-like, where you can craft a stick that can travel long distances. Here in this rocky terrain with all these pines and aspens all around, I'm looking to build a 25 to about a 45 uh, yard stick. That's about the average range, max range I'll be able to go. Most of my targets will sit at 25. I'm looking to build a stick that will go beyond 25, clear to that 45 range. But uh, you know, I gotta think about if I spend too much time building something, I'm not gonna be able to employ it to its max effective capability. So when I head out in the bush, I look for what nature's already provided. I look for branches, trees, um, any sort of uh, thin but thick trunks that are kind of in a natural bend, whether it's symmetrical like a whale's tail, where it goes like this, or it's asymmetrical, where it's shaped like a J or a seven, or even an L, or sometimes even an S. But I wanna see what nature provides. I'll cut it down with a saw, an ax, or a primitive stone tool, remove that section, and then I'll get to shaping it. So this pine tree you can kind of see up behind me, it's got this natural little bend. That'd be a good piece to take for a rabbit stick. It's already formed in a nice symmetrical pattern. I could cut it off at its ends. It's a little bit thick, might take a little bit more time to shape out, but it gives me a nice um, symmetrical piece like a whale's tail. I can create a handle, create a head, shape it, throw it. So here's another example of a nice little naturally bent tree. This piece of pine right here. Has a nice little general curve. Now this is very thick, this is very big, but that's the shape you're looking for in pine. However, I would like it to be a little bit smaller, about, about the thickness of maybe diameter, about two and a half to three inches. So that would give me an easy way of shaping this out. But you can see these shapes do exist, but uh, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit big. Up at the top, you get a little bit of a little bend right up there, but it's not the best. So one thing that makes aspen really awesome is and a lot of the the base components right where the the trunk starts to go into those roots it kind of has a natural little bend and you'll see that where it will kind of have like a little bit of a swooping j this isn't a bad piece right here it's got a little bend right to about this spot and about to this spot i can make this my handle that my natural bend right there and uh i could definitely cut that out and use it as a throw stick So what I'm doing first is actually determining what's going to be my handle end, what's going to be my heavy end. Uh, you can kind of see the natural bend in this piece of aspen right here. This little smaller end down here is where my handle is going to be. This is going to be my heavier end. And what I'm doing is I'm going to flatten out the entire bottom side that would rest in my palm just like this. So I just kind of make sure I got a good uh, uh, bottom drop for my axe or anything you're using. You don't want to cut into the dirt. And I just kind of look down the bottom side of this uh, throw stick to start removing mass. Keep in mind, this is green wood, so this is gonna dry out and eventually crack, but I could season this just like I would any sort of bow stave. It's just a, a matter of time. If I don't have all the time in the world and I need to use this now, because I wanna take some game, uh, snatch up some grouse or whatever the case may be, I'm gonna go with what I have right now, and that's some green wood.
So I've got my rough bottom. You can see it's relatively flat. It's got a slight little bend right up in here. I might take a little bit more mass off. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to take off the top. Now keep in mind, I'm still going with the dome profile where it's going to be flat on the bottom and it's going to be rising just slightly. So I want to keep this form, but I want to remove a lot of this mass on the top because it's going to reduce the weight and it's going to help with a better throw. Find where that line's going to be. Alright, you can see it's flat on the top, it's flat on the bottom. Now what I'm going to do next is, again, you're remembering at all times that I'm throwing an open face, my hands flat. So this is going to be the action of my stick. What I need to do is I need to take all of these uh, rough hard angles and I need to round them out. The top of my stick is going to be rounded like this the bottom will be nice and flat. So for that, I'm going to look, remember, where's the bottom, where's my top, and I'm going to start reducing those hard angles on the top side. Alright, started to round out the top. I took off these hard angles right on that top side, right here and right here. Now that I still have a relatively um, rounded top, this is where I'm going to go to a lighter blade and do a little bit more shaping. This carving here is just real, real simple carving. Just making sure that my, my top, my rounded side, is universal the whole way throughout. You still see I have some of the bark on here. I'm not taking that off quite yet. See, across the top, it's got the same, same bevel, same arch, that same roundedness the whole way through. You can kind of put it through your hand. If it runs through your hand without your fingers moving up and down like this, right there, I can see them moving. You gotta take a little bit out. It's kind of your gauge. Good. Relatively smooth, relatively flat. Now, I need to think about this uh, edge here, this bark. This edge has to be a slope. Now, the easiest way to get that slope where you need it is 
not to really take off the edge, but to continue to take the bottom. What that's going to do is it's going to raise this edge up. It's going to lighten it up. It's going to reduce mass. But it's a lot easier to cut something flat and continuously flat than it is to keep rounding and rounding and rounding and rounding and rounding. So I've got my rough top. I've got my rough bottom. Now I'm going to remove mass. And essentially, this bark, this little bit, half inch of bark, the whole way down is my gauge. And once I say I get to about halfway through, you can't see that, but once you get to that little mark right there, then I know that's actually going to be my new bottom the whole way up and through. So I'm going to get to the uh, mass removal side on the bottom back with my axe and uh, I'll get back here with you. Now you can already see on this side as well, that's where my mark is. You can already see where I've started to reduce this down, where this is thicker up here in that bark, and it's a lot thinner down here. I'm removing that mass, but I'm removing it on the belly side. Perfect. So I've reduced it already. I've taken off a lot more of the belly, keeping my nice rounded top. I still have about maybe a half an inch of this bark right here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my knife and I'm gonna refine this edge one more time. When I'm doing this, I'm taking off that bark, but I'm also reducing that angle from the bark to the wood. So as you see right here, there's there's a there's an angle. You can kind of make it out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that off, and when I take that off, I'm actually taking off the bark and the wood, dropping my lower edge, or my front edge, just like that. Dropped it right off. Do it on the back side as well. Looks good there. Looks good there. Apologize for the wind, but now what you can see is I've gone from that um, about half inch down to a quarter inch of bark. Now instead of using my axe on the belly, I'm gonna use my blade on the belly and I'm gonna refine this down just a little bit more till there's just a smidge of bark left. This is really gonna help flatten out the bottom. It's gonna to help to find that edge one more time. Still making sure that it's flat. A couple spots you gotta check for the uh, flatness is right at the very end. Sometimes from you carving out, you'll scoop out at the very end and you'll you'll kind of leave this mounted. Just kind of come and do a couple little final strokes, a little finishing stroke on there. Solid. 
Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to continue on with this uh, rounded edge and I'm going to slightly take off the remaining bark. The one thing I don't want is any flat edges coming up and then going round it. I want it to be rounded. So when it sits, it just does that. No rounded and then flat edge and then bottom. It's rounded all the way across the top. If you do find that, go to the very top of the wood and start coming back down and around. You gotta remember that this stick design is based on what you see behind me. Pine, aspen, very tight trees. It's gonna allow me to get up to squirrels and trees, rabbits on the ground, any grouse running across the area. But it's not meant to uh, fly for 150 yards. This one right here is based off this area. I'm looking at 25 to 45 yards max to uh, you know essentially hit a, a potential target. That's what I'm kind of aiming for. All right, so I've got her generally shaped out. Um, I'm still gonna have to do a little tuning to it. But what I need to do is add my front rounded bevel and my back rounded bevel. So all I'm gonna do is go back to my ax, kind of hold this guy at an angle, just give myself some downward chops. Not bad. All right, now to sand this guy, I just found a nice little stone, found a nice relatively flat part. And all I'm gonna do is just draw it back and forth. If you got sandpaper at home, you can definitely use that. And all it's gonna do is score the edges with some nice grooves, kind of like a golf ball. The golf ball has a divot, but this will definitely reduce any of the wood snags or Give it a little bit more shape. Feels good, good weight, good rotation. Let's give it a pull. All right, folks, that sums it up pretty much for the rabbit stick. Uh, that's how I make them. There's probably a lot of different ways that people will go about making their uh, rabbit sticks. That's how I make it. Shape out the bottom, shape off the top, start working on my edges, back to the bottom, back to the top, give it a few throws. Remember, where I'm uh, you know, operating in, where I'm living in, is gonna impact the design of my throw stick. If I'm in nice open expanses, I wanna find something that's nice and wide and flat that I can throw for a distance. If I got a lot of pine and rocks in and around me, I got to build something that's relatively durable, then I'm going to be showing thro uh, throwing shorter distances. So it's case by case. The environment will ultimately dictate, but uh, yeah, it's a great tool. 
get out and make one, and I'll see you in the bush.